Welcome back to the Kaya Olson Show. Joining me now is Congressman Bill Heisinga, who represents Michigan's 2nd District and is up for re-election this year. It was announced on Wednesday that Congressman Heisinga had contracted coronavirus. So first of all, how are you doing? I'm uh, I'm doing fine, Kyle. Thank you for asking. And uh, it, yeah, it certainly was a strange day. I woke up on Wednesday morning and I thought to myself, maybe I need a Claritin. Uh, and for anybody who lives in uh, West Michigan this time of year, you know exactly why. It's just, uh, it was just my, uh, the felt at most uh, a mild seasonal allergies. And, uh, but thank heavens, frankly, for the protocol for my, uh, my getting together with the vice president, I had to do the rapid test. And uh, when that came back uh, positive, I was extremely surprised. I have had a, uh, the PCR test that more in-depth test that has confirmed I have coronavirus, but um, you know I'm I'm feeling like a, you know a touch of a head cold at best or at worst I guess, and uh, so far and I hope it stays that way. And we're uh, we're working from an isolated uh, spot. I'm not uh, interacting with folks uh, or my family, but uh, we're we're still plowing ahead, doing uh, doing interviews and making calls and doing the things that we need to do. So speaking of coronavirus, um, President Trump and the Republicans have been pushing for additional coronavirus relief. Um, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has been opposed and, in fact, um, got very snotty, in my opinion, in an interview with CNN host Wolf Blitzer this week um, when he had just a mild amount of pushback. So where does that relief stand now? Oh, that, that was hilarious. When she's accusing Wolf Blitzer of carrying the Republicans' water, it's like, seriously, have you actually seen Wolf Blitzer on here? Uh, you know, uh, but th- it just shows the extent of which she knows that she's feeling hemmed in. She has people like even like Ro Khan, who's, who is one of the most progressive of the progressives, saying we need to get something done here. Um, she's got her people in her own party that are calling for action as they should be and joining the Republicans in a discharge petition, trying to get some action. And she's literally telling them, hold your water. We'll be OK. We'll survive this election. We'll get a bigger deal and we can hang this on the Republicans that we haven't had another package. Well, shame on the media and frankly, shame on the American people if we're going to let them get away with that. So so what she's doing is just 100 percent political. Oh, totally. I I mean, she has made the political calculation that it is better for them uh, for this election to not have a deal so that they can uh, they can uh, try to attack the president on this versus getting something done and giving him a quote unquote win. Uh, Well, you know, Kyle, sadly, the people that are losing are the American taxpayer and Mm -hmm. uh, and the citizens. And uh, but that uh, that's never exactly been her her main focus anyway. Now, one of my concerns as a fiscal conservative is that as we have been in this coronavirus, you know, situation, there has been stimulus after stimulus and bill after bill. um, And it just seems to me like we're no longer talking about millions. And and in fact, we're hardly even talking about billions anymore. Now we're in trillions. Um, So at what point are Republicans going to get concerned about the spending? Well, a lot of us are, and uh, that has been uh, some tougher votes. Uh, you know, as we've as we've been going through this, we uh, we all had to kind of look at each other and say, okay, even the CARES Act, uh, which was uh, 2.2 trillion, uh, which is a huge amount of money, let's make sure that we are using this wisely, and uh, because it, that's a that's a huge swath on the you know Uncle Sam's credit card. But that's also why you've seen us all, virtually all of us, oppose uh, the proposals that the speaker has had, you know, 3.4 trillion, 3 trillion. She's now dropped it to about 2.2, 2.2 or 2.4 trillion dollars. Uh, we've seen the White House, frankly, steadily kind of increase uh, its uh, where it was coming from, 800 billion to a trillion to 1.2 trillion, and now 1.6, maybe even 1.8 trillion dollars. And the president has said. Um, he'd be willing to spend even more. I honestly, I think as he goes beyond those thresholds, he'll start losing a significant swath of the Republicans uh, for supporting a, pro, uh, a package like that. And we've and we've seen Mitch McConnell uh, say he was going to uh, do a uh, another bill uh, on the Senate floor. I think it was at a five hundred billion dollar uh, you know price tag. So I think that's where you probably see more Republican comfort levels, and you start talking about trillions it's going to get very difficult to vote for it. 
Is there, because I think a lot of this is sort of one-time spending, um, is there, what does it take to Republican, for Republicans to get back to a balanced budget? And is that even, I mean, is that even possible? Well, uh, theoretically, yes, it is possible. It is a lot of work and, frankly, a lot of pain. And, um, yes, this might be, quote, unquote, one-time money. Uh, but my experience as a, uh, as a staffer and now as an elected uh, member of Congress, there is uh, precious few things that are ever, quote, one time or, right. quote, temporary spending. It, it, you know, it's, you start locking in. Uh, to spending levels, and people start going, "Well, we this was the only way we survived. We can't, we can't survive without it. You have mm -hmm. to give us this money, right?" And so it becomes sort of, uh, you know, perpetuating. Um, I'll, 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 uh, I'll let me light a candle here, though, and not just curse the darkness. Um, <laughs> there, there are thirty of us, uh, thirty Republicans and thirty Democrats. We haven't come up with anything more inventive than thirty by thirty. But we've kind of been doing this Noah Ark approach, right? You know, where it's uh, we're we're not adding people, not doing anything unless it's one Republican, one Democrat. But this thirty by thirty group has uh, sent joint letters to both uh, Kevin McCarthy and Speaker Pelosi, uh, outlining our concerns on some of these spending levels, having some tangible suggestions of what to do, uh, and and you got to start small. You know, I was one of the the uh, founding members of the Balanced Budget Amendment Caucus. I would love to have that be a part of that letter. That's just not realistic. I'm not going to get 30 of my Democrat colleagues at this point uh, who, frankly, would be just teeing themselves up for a big, massive uh, primary uh, to, to sign on to a balanced budget amendment. But nonetheless, uh, you know, these are some smaller incremental steps where we have to get this conversation going on both sides of the aisle and in all sectors of, uh, of, of uh, our economy and our society. Uh, we have to realize what we're doing to our kids and our grandkids here. So, uh, yes, I agree. And I think my kids agree <laughs> as well. Uh, the National Republican Campaign Committee told me a couple weeks ago that they are focused on about 50 districts and they need to flip 17 to win the majority. How are things looking on that front? Yeah, I mean, we've, got, uh, we've got a very, very solid uh, class of candidates. Uh, and this is, this is actually how the Democrats did it two years ago. Uh, they went in and targeted, for example, veterans. Uh, so they had a number of candidates that had had uh, experience in the military, um, community uh, members that had very deep roots in those communities. Um, and they, they really sort of, um, you know, kind of out-recruited us. Uh, the, uh, the, the shoes on the other foot this time, we have got some excellent, excellent people and who, who came close, uh, last time. And when you see dynamics like a Mike Garcia out in, in California, where we haven't had that seat in 22 years, right? Uh, we're seeing some things moving in these different States that, uh, may not have, uh, may not have seen that kind of activity or action in the past. Well, looking at winning back some seats in New York, uh, Claudia Tenney in, uh, in, in, in New York, and uh, looking at that uh, Staten Island seat, uh, you know, getting that back into the Republican column. We've, we've got some real good opportunities, and at a minimum, I think we do a significant, a significant narrowing of, our, of, our, our, uh, of the Democrats' majority, and we've got a real shot at taking a slim majority in the House as well. So, what, Congressman Bill Heisinger, thanks for joining me today. Hey, thanks, Kyle. Good to be with you. This is the Kyle Olson Show. We'll be right back.